If you've ever heard any of these spoken to you, certain muscles are more important for spine stabilization, for example, the transverse abdominis when you're doing planks, weak abs lead to back pain, you can strengthen your core to reduce back pain, or you can work certain core muscles individually, then you must watch and listen to this video because everything you've been told is a lie. And make sure you watch all the way to the end because I'm gonna give you the best core exercises you can do as a combat athlete. First, we must define what the core is. Typically, when people refer to the core, they're talking about the six pack abs or the rectus abdominis, the abdominal wall at the front. Now, the core involves more muscles than that typically. If we're talking about solely the trunk, then we're talking about the obliques on the side. We're talking about deeper core muscles like the transverse abdominis. But we're also talking about muscles posteriorly or at the back. For example, the spinal erectors or erector spinae and the quadratus lumborum at the back. But in my opinion, the core involves more than just that small midsection of the trunk. The core is anything from the shoulders down to below the hips. This is where the majority of the sporting actions happen and it allows you to transfer force and momentum from your extremities through to other extremities. For example, when you're punching, you're transferring force from your feet into the floor through to your hands. And it's exactly the same when you're grappling, when you're trying to throw an opponent, you are transferring the force from the ground from your feet through your hips and to your upper body. So what is the main function of the core muscles? So the main function, you're looking at flexion, so things like bending over or sit-ups. You're looking at extension, so think about a typical back extension, essentially coming back up. You're looking at lateral flexion, so side to side. Think of a basic side bend, but you're also looking at rotation. So obviously we know most rotation movements. Now within those, those are the movements, but we also have resisting those movements. So often you'll see core exercises labeled as flexion and anti-flexion, extension and anti-extension, rotation, anti-rotation, etc. Because the core musculature has that function of resisting movement, but also providing movement. So the number one reason you've likely been told you need to strengthen your core is for core stability or spinal stabilization or to reduce back pain. And we're gonna address these common phrases against the current research. Now, typically when we're talking about working the core or when you're told to work the core, you're talking about the transverse abdominis, that deep bracing core muscle. And people will often tell you, you need to isolate this muscle and strengthen it to improve your core strength. Now, does it really improve stability and reduce back pain? So I think the best way to illustrate this is through pregnant women. So when a woman is pregnant, you have a stretching of the abdominal wall. Now, many women lose the ability to do a sit up because of the stretch. The muscles are so stretched that it cannot produce adequate force for a woman to be able to sit up. However, there's been no correlation between sit up performance and back pain. So we can deduce from that, that the strength of the core muscles is not related to back pain. Interestingly, it takes around four to six weeks after giving birth for the abdominal muscles to return back to their normal state and about eight weeks for pelvic stability to normalize. It would be expected that during these four to eight weeks, there would be minimal spinal stabilization because of the stretched muscles and the lack of pelvic stability. And you would think that would increase the risk of back pain. However, in a study of over 800 pregnant women who suffered from back pain, over 600 of them spontaneously recovered within the first week. So how can back pain improve when it takes a minimum of four weeks for the core muscles to get back to their normal state? Along the same lines of core stability, we have this idea of core strength. You have a weak core, you need to develop strength in your core so you reduce back pain, improve performance, etc. However, this is misguided. It's just standing and walking only takes around 2% of your maximum voluntary isometric contraction of the rectus recti abdominis, so the front wall of your abs, which means out of 100%, so you can tense your abs as hard as you can, it takes 2% of that force to maintain your upright posture when you're walking or standing. And it takes 5% for the obliques. Now, if we add 32 kilos to your torso, so you're wearing a 32 kilo backpack, whatever it is, you only increase this by 2%. So the idea that you need to improve your core strength to reduce back pain doesn't make much sense because you're barely using these muscles to remain in upright posture. Further, we can't isolate 
certain core muscles. You can't isolate your transverse abdominus or your bracing muscle. Everything works together, especially when you're doing exercises like planks, side planks, whatever it is. All the core muscles and the muscles in your body work together to maintain that posture. It's not just down to one muscle. We can further debunk this myth of core strength and core stability for reducing back pain and the idea that just because you're performing core exercises lying down, sitting, etc., does not mean it will transfer to standing or athletic activities. Now within combat sports, throwing punches, throwing kicks, wrestling, jiu-jitsu are all core exercises. If you uh, have been out of training for a while and you come back, for example, and do a wrestling class and you're fighting a lot of over-unders, that resisting of rotation and resisting another human and trying to manipulate another human, I guarantee you'll wake up the next day with a very sore trunk and that is because those muscles are being worked over time during these activities and i can guarantee you that type of quote unquote core training is far more powerful and beneficial than lying on the floor and doing some planks dead bugs etc now am i telling you never to train the trunk or core muscles no i'm not saying that and i'm actually going to show you some of my favorite trunk or core exercises for combat athletes and it spans across all the combat sports. Some are better for others in my opinion and in my experience. But the whole idea of training the trunk within combat sports isn't to strengthen and stabilize the spine or the trunk. The whole idea is to improve performance and you're trying to improve the ability to transfer momentum from your legs through to your upper extremities. You're also improving the ability to resist and maintain posture, especially within grappling arts. So developing the trunk and the core is about being strong and resisting, being able to produce force quickly and being able to remain stiff during moments that you need to. So here are some of my favorites. I'll rank them from beginner exercises through to intermediate through to more advanced exercises. So we're gonna start with the beginner and intermediate exercises. Now, am I against the traditional core exercises that are traditionally used within combat sports? Hundreds of sit-ups, crunches, etc. No, you can do those. They have a time and place, but I believe there are better variations that you can use that transfer better. So under the beginning exercises, I'm going to have some videos rolling over this while I talk so you can kind of see what they are, but seated plate rotation. So you're sitting, moving to one side slowly and then exploding back to the top. It's sim similar to a Russian twist. A Russian twist, you're going side to side quickly. This is a little more controlled movement, you'll feel the stretch. What I like about it is the hips stay facing forward and you're rotating the trunk. And that's developing that ability to dissociate the upper body from the lower body, which is important, especially in striking sports where the hips move and then the upper body when you're throwing punches. Same thing, even within grappling, have, being able to be in positions where your hips are one way and your upper body is another way for whatever reason. Then you've got a hanging knee raise. What I like about this is it develops the hip flexors at the same time. The hanging as well creates traction on your shoulders and your lower back. So it just feels nice overall. And you get a nice stretch through the abdominal wall. So hanging knee raise is a regression from the hanging leg raise. So you can definitely start there. For these, looking at around 10 reps. The band rotation, again, you can do these with cables as well or whatever implement you wanna to use to do the rotation. You can do these multiple ways. You can do them just facing one way and just turning the uh, upper body or you can have your hips move with it like I show in the video. I prefer to have the hips moving with rotational exercises most of the time. Again, five to 10 each way. You have suitcase carries. So carries are an excellent trunk or core variation because it involves your whole body having to stabilize the load. So suitcase carries just carrying something heavy in one arm and then walking and you'll swap sides. A kettlebell is usually the easiest when you're doing these. And then a farmer's walk. Now you've got implements in two hands you're having to maintain an upright posture while you're holding and carrying something heavy. We can throw in other carries in there as well, sandbags, etc. We can also add throws into this. I'm not adding throws into this, um, but throws definitely fit within this category and that's every single throw you can imagine. Then we can look at the more intermediate. Once you get a little stronger, maybe you've mastered these exercises, done them for a while. We can turn the hanging knee raise into a hanging leg raise. Obviously with the longer leg, you're now increasing the lever arm. It makes it harder to curl the legs up and get the pelvis under. Then we have an explosive band rotation. So instead of just a normal cable rotation, we can now do it quickly to develop power. Again, with explosive band rotation, typically you'll do less reps than you will with just the normal band or cable rotation. Hanging leg raise, again, you can do similar reps to what you're doing with the hanging knee raise. Then explosive back extension. We can also add the back extension to the beginner one. But the explosive back extension I really like is just thrusting your hips through the pad and getting up as quick as possible. So it's just an explosive hip extension really, but using the back extension machine. 
Landmine rotation, definitely one of my favorite rotational exercises. I like to do it when I'm moving the hip with the bar. I think that's where you get most of the transfer because very rarely are you just resisting this rotation out the side. You can do that. It actually makes a good progression if you start with a resisting a rotation by keeping your hips fixed. And then maybe in the next cycle, you're turning the hip with it. I like to do five, five to six reps each side. I typically like to do all the reps on one side, then all the reps on the other side. So you can really nail down that explosive concentric back extension with a twist. So this is a bit of a harder back extension variation where instead of just coming straight up, you're twisting as you come up. The lateral oblique hold, this one's brutal on your obliques on the side there. You're having to essentially stabilize your whole upper body while your legs are fixed into a back extension machine. You can hold weights with this as well. And then the barbell sit up, one of my favorite flexion exercises. So traditional sit up, you're using no weight. The barbell sit up, your legs are straight and you have to sit up while holding the bar in front and above you. And then the trick is to resist as slow as possible on the way down. It also makes a good exercise to superset with things like side bends as well if you're looking for developing some trunk or core size. Finally, the advanced section of these core exercises. And these are some of my favorites. The first one is one you probably haven't seen before. It's popularized by Franz Bosch. It's an upper lower dissociation exercise. So if you remember in the beginner section, I talked about how the rotation being, seated plate rotation, being able to keep your hips fixed and move to the side, basically to have your hips facing one way and your upper body facing the other. And this is that on steroids. So now you're doing it explosively. You're moving the foot across while performing the rotation. And essentially you're exploring that very end range of that rotation, the very end range of the trunk muscles. And it becomes a reactive exercise. You're basically improving the ability to produce force quickly in those end ranges of motion, which can be useful for strikers and grapplers. It is very difficult to learn to do. I've found that the best athletes I've trained, the ones that are specifically within team sports and running sports, the ones that are very strong runners and strong, I guess you could say, ball players and options players, they are very good at this exercise. And the ones that don't have that same coordination and strength when they're running, struggle with this exercise. So typically better athletes are better at this exercise. So it's actually a pretty good proxy. Um, the catch band rotation, it's a very similar concept to the Bosch version, just way easier to implement. You're essentially, waiting to the end and then you're just letting go essentially with your trunk and then you're catching and then coming straight back. So it becomes a reactive core exercise or core rotation exercise. Then we have rollouts. So rollouts with the ab wheel are relatively easy, but do it with the barbell, it's a little bit harder. So the goal with the ab rollout is I always like to use on my knees Typically, if you're trying to do it on your feet, one, it's way too hard, and two, your shoulders take a beating. So do these on your knees. You're gonna roll out, maintaining that straight back. And instead of trying to pull the bar back in with your arms and lats, you wanna think about almost like crunching uh, your abs to bring the bar back. And that will make all the difference when you're doing this exercise. Essentially, it's what you would call an anti-extension exercise. You're trying to prevent yourself from arching your lower back while you're doing it. Then finally, it's the lateral oblique hold again, but this time with a pulse, or you can call it a perturbation or whatever you want to call it. But essentially you're going to be in that same position, but you're going to hold a plate and you're going to pump it out in front or overhead. And then doing that, you have to retain the contraction of your entire trunk and all the muscles around your spine. If you don't do that, you will lose the position. So that's a really good one for, especially for strikers to create that stiffness. And obviously we know that stiffness at impact is what maximizes effective mass and uh, maximizes transfer of that momentum you're generating into the target. So that's why I kind of like those kind of pulse exercises too. So if you have any core exercises that you really like, throw them down in the comments for me so I can take a look and see what you're up to. Also make sure to check out the Sweet Science of Fighting Underground. All the training programs are in there. The online courses, the private community, that's all down in the description. Also, if you have any more topics, please make sure you comment, like, subscribe. All of that helps this channel grow and helps more people see these videos.